Good evening, doctors, and welcome to the Quiron Salud Masterclass. Today we have the pleasure to introduce you, doctors Juanjo Torrent and Francois Kennet. Dr. Torrent is an expert in minimally invasive oncological surgery. His area of specialization is focused on the surgical treatment of peritoneal carcinomatosis of ovarian origin, and he's the main investigator in Spain of clinical studies of European scope on the treatment of peritoneal carcinomatosis by cytoreduction surgery. Dr. Kenneth is an expert in digestive and hepatobiliary surgery. He directs peritoneal carcinomatosis treatment programs through surgery plus hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, HIPEC. He's the principal investigator of a trial dedicated to research on HIPEC and colorectal cancer. Three quick instructions for you, doctors. The, question, the questions to doctors Torrent and Kenneth can be typed in the questions and answer box. Some questions will be answered by the doctors at the end of the session, and the certificate of attendance can be collected at the end of the session. Please, Dr. Torrent, you can proceed to present the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carlos. And thank you to everyone to let us to talk about uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis. Then, uh, let's start. What is uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis? Okay, peritoneal carcinomatosis is a situation that means uh, an intraperitoneal cell spreading from intraabdominal tumors. This means in all the diseases an advanced stage, and also means a uh, poor pronunciation. Another uh, thing important to know about peritoneal carcinomatosis is that the uh, symptoms manage management is very, very challenging. What is the origin of the peritoneal carcinomatosis? We have two kinds of origins. First one is a primary origin uh, from peritoneum, as mesothelioma, serous carcinoma of the peritoneum, some carcinomas, and also peritoneal pseudomyxomas. The second kind of uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis are secondary uh, origins as ovarian cancer, colorectal cancer, gastric cancer, appendical cancer, and other kind of cancer as gold bladder cancer, pancreas, etc. The second part is much more frequent than the first one. What is the incidence of this peritoneal carcinomatosis? Okay, let's see. For the most frequent cancers, as colorectal cancer, we find that 30% at the initial diagnostic of a colorectal cancer will find a peritoneal carcinomatosis. And also, in these kinds of cancers, in colorectal cancer, 30% of the relapses will appear as a peritoneal carcinomatosis. In gastric cancer, another very common uh, cancer, 30% of the initial diagnostic will appear as a peritoneal carcinomatosis, and in ovarian cancer, as all of you, you know, 70% uh, 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 at the initial diagnostic is a peritoneal carcinomatosis. In the United Arab Emirates, I just check uh, the incidence of cancer, and I realize that uh, every year you have more than 300 colon cancer, almost 160 uh, rectum cancer, stomach cancer are 145, and ovaries, uh, ovarian cancer is around uh, 100. This means that if we uh, compare with the other um, percentage that I just talked about, uh, we have more than 100, between 100 and 150 peritoneal carcinomatosis in this in United Arab Emirates each year. What is this, the treatment of the peritoneal carcinomatosis? What do we have to treat this kind of, of diseases or, or stage? The principal, the first one, is the site reduction. We'll talk later on. We have all, uh, also the chemotherapy, systemic or intraperitoneal. And we also have uh, biological therapies as target drugs and why not the immunotherapy and a combination of other kind of, of treatments that we call HIPED, uh, Dr. Kenneth will talk about uh, later, and PIPAC. But the most important 
is that uh, we have different strategies to treat it, depending on the patient characteristics, tumor type, tumor biology, and available uh, therapies. I will say you also that we, do, we don't have enough. Uh, people are still dying about peritoneal carcinomatosis. Then uh, we are researching in the new treatments, and for it, we have now genetic profiling about, uh, in, in, the, in these tumors. Also, we are studying the microenvironment of, of the peritoneal carcinomatosis because uh, one other very important idea to have in peritoneal carcinomatosis is that the treatment must be sequential and needs a multidisciplinary approach. This is very, very important. Okay, let's talk about the importance of the surgery. Then, uh, in, this, uh, in this picture, you see the difference in the overall survival about the, from the residual disease. Let's see in the first one in, on, the left, on the left corner, is in colorectal cancer. If the residual disease is zero, the survival is much more important than when we let 2.5 millimeters. This is the same for gastric cancer, for pseudomyxoma, and for mesothelioma. It's the same in all kinds of tumors. For ovarian cancer, exactly the same. If we remove all the disease, okay, we have a median overall survival of more than 100 months. But if we let one centimeter, this overall survival is less than 50 months, then it's more than double. Then, important message, there is not any example of a peritoneal malignancy in which completeness of cytoreduction reduction is not the stronger pronostic factor. Requirements of this surgery. Okay, as I told you one minute before, the cytorectal uh, reductive uh, surgery must be macroscopically complete. But it's so important to preserve organ and functions as far as possible for the quality of life of the patient. Okay. You see in this video, in a short video, we have nodules just very close to the small bowel, and this is a kind of technique that we use with scissors to remove it okay. and avoid a resection of the small bowel. This is a picture of a pelvectomy. These are a few examples of the, of the surgery. This is another picture of the final view of the pelvectomy. As you see, we cannot see no implant of tumor. Here, yes. This is a diaphragmatic peritonectomy, a right diaphragmatic. We need to mobilize the, the liver. This is a glissonectomy. Is, um, here in this, this case, we have um, um, a disease on the surface of the liver, and then we can remove uh, with uh, the new techniques that this surface called uh, glisson. And also, this is a picture of a diaphragmatic excision because sometimes this uh, disease is very deep in the, in the peritoneum, in the, in, the, in the muscle, and we need to remove a, 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 a piece of it. Let's move to talk about ovarian cancer. Then, as you know, we have uh, many, many cases around the world, but in the United Emirates Arabs, uh, you have 100 new cases per year, with already 70 deaths per year is the leading cause of death in gynecological cancer in Europe. And almost all of them, 75%, are in stage three or four. And normally the standard treatment is surgery plus chemotherapy plus less biological therapy. The most common recurrence is in the peritoneum and we try to use a local regional approach to treat it. But, Using this kind of very aggressive surgeries, 
uh, as you see, people are still dying about ovarian cancer. And how can we do better? Then we are trying other kind of treatments for ovarian cancer that uh, I will try to explain to you in, in the next slides. We try to do intraperitoneal chemotherapy because ovarian cancer, we consider it as a local regional uh, disease. We try to do a local regional approach using intraperitoneal chemotherapy. Also, we try to change our strategy and we, we change and we, we try to um, change uh, first chemotherapy after we do a um, surgery or uh, at, the, at the opposite, trying to start with surgery after that chemotherapy, uh, different strategies. And we are also incorporating new drugs as target therapy or immunotherapy. As intraperitoneal uh, therapy, last two years ago, in January 2018, uh, uh, a trial was published talking about HIPEC. HIPEC is to, um, to put chemotherapy in the abdomen, a headed uh, chemotherapy in the abdomen. Then this important um, uh, paper show us that only doing the same surgery, I mean the two arms, doing the same surgery, but adding HIPEC in, the, in one arm, the survival was one uh, year more in that group of uh, who receive uh, uh, chemotherapy, HIPEC, sorry. After that, what uh, kind of treatments are we trying also that we can add to the surgery plus uh, HIPEC? Then, uh, as a systemic chemotherapy, we have the bevacizumab for a long time ago, more than 10 years. And now, since uh, a few years, for BRCA mutate people that is in the United Emirates Arab as around 20%, we have recent data that allow to use uh, PARP inhibitors as maintenance in frontline therapy with excellent results in this kind of, of patients. And we are also trying in other patients without this mutation. In recurrent ovarian cancer, PAP inhibitors are approved as therapy and maintained since uh, 2014. And also, we have novel therapies as immunotherapy that are being evaluated to uh, to try to, to diminish this, this reduce this, this, this mortality of the ovarian cancer. Then now, let me introduce uh, Dr. Kone, that uh, he will talk uh, a little bit about uh, the other kind of uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis. Thank you, Juanjo. Can you put my slides? We are going to uh, have an overview uh, about the treatment of the, the different diseases we have. Um, we have to treat uh, accepted the, the ovarian cancer, of course. Uh, so uh, I have the. Non, c'est fini, tu vois. Okay. Okay. So we have, I have the difficult task to, to make this overview uh, of the international guidelines for the CRS and IPEG. You know what CRS means? It means cytoreductive surgery. Uh, because we mix the two treatments, the, the, the CRS in the one hand, and the IPEC in the other hand. So what's the, the problem with this? The peritoneal carcinomatosis, is it a, a, a specific metastatic model? Probably several different pathways in metastatic dissemination. It's a di diffuse dissemination in the abdominal cavity. It's isolated in 20% of the cases, and there is often a worse response to the systemic chemotherapy than in other uh, metastatic location, for instance, for the liver metastasis in the colorectal setting. So what do we do? We have to do an, an IPEC. It's an intraperitoneal administration of 
uh, chemotherapy agent. It's per-operatively given and given with hypothermia. So it, it needs a complete or a maximal cytorelictive surgery to eliminate the macroscopic disease less than 2.5 millimeter, but the best, the best, of course, is zero millimeters, what we call CC0 or R0 uh, in the other classification. So it needs to, to it, we need to have, uh, in some cases, huge uh, cytoreductive surgery to make in order to have um, a CC0 surgery. Uh, done for those patients. We are, we are going to have an overview of the different diseases we can treat. And the first one, the, the model in the history, was the pseudomyxoma peritonei. You know, everybody knows uh, Paul Sugarbaker, who, who, who made the, who, he was the pioneer of this. And uh, this disease is, is a very interesting model. You know that it comes from uh, an um, appendiceal uh, mucinous tumor, as you can see in the center of the, the slide. And it, it, uh, it was difficult to treat in the past because if you see this etric uh, series, uh, there, was, there was a recurrence rate without IPEC of more than 90% with a very bad 10-year uh, survival in this disease with only 21%. And what we can do with the IPEC and CRS today, this is uh, the result of an international paper with the, 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 the files of many of the, the, the more specialized teams in the world. And you can see that we, we reach more than 16 years uh, overall survival with this combination treatment with the, the CRS and, and, and uh, IPEC. So, concerning the pseudomyxoma peritonei, the CRS and IPEC has become a worldwide standard of care, of course, and uh, morbidity and mortality rates are no longer arguments against this approach uh, with a very low mortality and very low morbidity regarding the, the, the importance of the, the surgery we have to do in, the, in those cases. The mediatelium operatory is the same thing. You know that there are, there are three different subtypes, histologic uh, subtypes. The um, multicystic here, the epithelioid here, and the sarcomatoid here. And the, the, the gravity of the disease is, uh, is uh, not so, so important in the first case, and very, very severe disease uh, from, for the sarcomatoid. And we reach in this cases, in those cases, a very good uh, median of all survival with the, the combination treatment of CRS and IPEC with 53 uh, overall survival, median overall survival for those patients. And you can see that the IPEC was uh, one of the most important uh, prognostic factor in the motive area analysis. So, same thing in the middle telioma peritonei. The, the, the CRS and IPEC has become the, the worldwide standard of care. One disease you don't have to forget because it's very difficult to treat, because, mainly because of the, the lack of response to systemic treatment. And uh, the survival rates in this disease, in the small bowel adenocarcinoma, is very close to the one we have uh, with the colorectal setting. And uh, we can treat and we can sometimes cure uh, some patients with this disease and it's a very classical indication of the CRS and IBEC. One of the most important diseases uh, accepted the ovarian colorectal is the gastric adenocarcinoma. You have to see that in this setting more than 50% of the potentially curable uh, gastric cancer died of peritoneal recurrence. You know that the two pathways of recurrence for the gastric cancer are peritoneal first and the lymphatic uh, pathway for, in the other hand. And consider that 60% of all causes of gastric cancer death is from peritoneal carcinomatosis. So it's a very important problem. Very, it's, a, it's a public health pro, uh, issue. And uh, you can see that the prognosis was very, very bad in the past with the, the median survival in the natural history of the disease of only three, three months. 
with no real improvement for the patient who are EGFR positive because the trastuzumab uh, treatment cannot be given in more than 20% of the patients. The metastatic gastric cancer, even today, uh, the median survival is often less than one year. So what we can do, we can, uh, we can progress with the CRS and IPEC, not to replace the systemic chemotherapy, of course, but to add something in order to have better results. And if you see this uh, well-known study from China, from Yan Li, um, they, they showed that uh, CRS and IPEC did better than the CRS alone in this uh, phase three study published in the surgical oncology, uh, Annals of Surgical Oncology. This study is very interesting. It's a, it's a f um, comprehensive and multicentric uh, French study comparing uh, two groups of patients, one without uh, high pack with only the CRS and the other one with CRS and high pack uh, in, in those cases uh, given with uh, oxaliplatin at uh, 250 milligram per meter square. And it shows, sorry, it shows that uh, the, in blue, the, the blue curves are superior than the, the red ones. And you can see that the IPEC did, did better in those patients. The prognosis, the OS and the RFS2 was uh, better in the CRS and IPEC group. Even in case of the peritoneal recurrence, you can see that here that the, the, the proportion of patient uh, cured or in, in which the, the, the relapse, peritoneal relapse did not occur, it was very important and more important in the IPEC and CRS and IPEC group. So, this study is called CITOSHIP. It has been published uh, in 2019 in the, in the GCO and presented in the ASCO uh, the same year. And the, the conclusion is CRS and IPEC significantly improve OS and RFS compared to, to cytoreduction alone uh, among patients with limit, limited uh, PM from gastric cancer. Limited means not more than 12. Uh, without additional morbidity, and uh, with and this treatment represents a valuable, of course, option therapy for selected patients amenable to complete CRS. Of course, always you have to understand that the complete CRS, the macroscopic complete CRS, is the the cornerstone of the treatment, and it's, it's very important. If you don't have this, if you don't have a specialized team, surgically speaking, who, who can um, give this complete CRS to the patient, you will not have any uh, good result for them. The last, uh, but not least, is the colorectal carcinomatosis, of course. Uh, you know that in this setting, even today with the best chemotherapy, systemic chemotherapy uh, given uh, alone with uh, targeted therapy, with uh, immunotherapy in some cases, uh, the, the median uh, overall survival without surgery is not more than 16 months. So uh, what can we do, surgically speaking? In the past, uh, many teams uh, have been working on this a particular uh, concept of treatment, adding uh, IPEC to CRS, and ha had uh, very good results uh, concerning this, better than the chemotherapy alone, of course, uh, with uh, median OS ranging from 30 to 41 uh, months overall survival. You, everybody knows the, the Dutch study. It was the first phase three study in this setting. <coughs> sorry, in 2003, uh, showing that uh, CRS and IPEC uh, did better than a standard harm with the best supportive care. But in those cases, CRS and IPEC has always been uh, together, and we didn't know what was the role per se of the IPEC in this combination treatment. It's why we did decide to, to do this study. I conducted in, in, in a multicentric French study called Pradesh 7, and I presented it to uh, 2018 in the ASCO. 
And uh, unfortunately, you can see that uh, the IPEC, the addition of the IPEC, didn't have any uh, pro good results in those cases. But this is not a negative study because you can see that with the non in the non IPEC arm, with the, only the surgery with the specialized team, we we were able to give 41 months overall survival, uh, survival for those patients. And uh, in the multivariate analysis, we, we showed that, uh, we found that in a very specific group, it's very small in the slide, I don't know if you can see it, but it's very simple. This is the category of patients with a PCI between 11 and 15. And we show that in this particular uh, category, um, the prognostic was better, and uh, we can reach the same we have for the, the overall population of uh, 41.6 uh, months overall survival. And it was very significant between the two harms, showing that in the non ipec harms for those specific patients, we only had 32.7 uh, uh, months overall survival. So concerning this study, uh, the conclusion where the curative management of PC from uh, CRC by cytoreductive surgery alone shows unexpected satisfactory results. This is very important. Every CRC patient, of course, with peritoneal carcinomatosis should be considered for surgery. You, you don't have to treat only with chemotherapy alone those patients. And IPEC with oxaliplatin may be beneficial for patients with a medium PCI of 11 to 15. Two other studies very important in this setting of colorectal cancer were the two studies about the prophylaxy. What can, we, what can we do for those patients? The patient at risk of having, of developing a carcinomatosis, but they don't have it at the time of the diagnostic. Do you, uh, can you improve the prognosis of those patients in doing uh, an IPEC, a prophylactic IPEC? And the two studies, the French one here, for the prophylactic, uh, prophylaxis uh, study, and the other one you have to, you, you have, we are going to see later on, the Dutch one showed negative results. In the prophylactic setting, the oxaliplatin doesn't work. This is the Dutch study showing that there is no benefit of adding uh, an, an IPEC with oxaliplatin in this uh, particular setting of uh, prophylactic uh, carcinomatosis. So does IPEC in, in the colorectal setting still have a strong rationale? Probably yes, because the, the, the concept is very specific and you can maximize the total amount of drug deliver into the peritoneal tumor nodules by increasing, by improving the concentration of the, of the, the drug without, while minimizing uh, the, the toxicity um, that's delivered to the systemic circulation. So you can see that we have this very simple and very um, uh, interesting uh, concept of uh, a combined multi-organ resection with peritonectomy procedure, which is called CRS, cytoreductive surgery, uh, aiming at, uh, aimed at treat, treating the, the, the macroscopic disease and the hypothermic intraperitoneal peripatitive chemotherapy, the IPEC, uh, with the role of treating the microscopic uh, disease. So this is not the end of IPEC in the colorectal setting. You've seen that in, in the other disease, in the pseudomic soma, in the mesothelioma, in the gastric cancer, of course, in the ovarian cancer, as shown by the Dr. Torrent, uh, the IPEC is very important for prognosis. But here, we don't know exactly which is the best protocol because the French high dose and short duration oxaliplatin protocol fail at showing better results in, in this setting. But this is important to, to, to mention that CRS remains the key of curative treatment, of course. IPEC still probably have a strong rationale and its evaluation should continue because the failure of one IPEC regimen should not hand all IPEC treatments, of course. Oxaliplatin IPEC high dose and short duration, as I said, uh, should be abandoned probably, but we have alternative to P7 regimen now for the moment. Um, which are the idosmitomycin C 
19 minutes in three fraction. Uh, it's, uh, it's a worldwide, well-designed protocol. And the Wake Forest University from uh, James uh, Ed Levine uh, in the US showing good results with the low dose and long duration uh, oxaliplatin regimen. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, doctors, for such an interesting presentation. We have uh, some questions for you. The first one is, doctors, is there a possible cure for peritoneal carcinomatosis? Dr. Torrein, Dr. Kenneth? Mm, maybe Dr. Kenneth. Yes. Yes, of course. In the, um, for instance, in the colorectal, I mentioned uh, in the last part of my talk, uh, the, the proportion of patient completely cured, that means patient without any evidence of disease at five years, is 17%. This is not very important, but it's a, it's a revolution because you have to, to consider that, historically speaking, 15 years ago, the prognosis of those patients were only less than six months. And, uh, and today we can, we can offer a prognosis uh, and survival result of uh, more than 40 months. And in 17% of the cases, uh, the patient can be cured. Thank you very much. Another one question. Is there any, sorry, another one question, sorry. Is there any possibility for you to come to the UAE, they are questioning, to perform this kind of treatment? Okay, let me ask for this. Uh, yeah, why not? I think, as, as Dr. Connet told us, uh, the most important thing is that the, the cornerstone of the treatment is the, is the surgery. After that, uh, the surgery is very, very important, but also the, the, all the, the rest of the team, I mean, the anesthesiologists, the nurses, um, we can try in the future to, to, to show how to do it and to, to collaborate and establish a kind of collaboration with them. Why not? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a possibility, yes, of course. Thank you very much, doctor. And the other one, the third one is, should we perform hypokinol peritoneal carcinomatosis? Maybe, Dr. Craig. <laughs> it's a difficult question because uh, there is a lot of disease in which we can we can do this treatment, but uh, the, the more the, the more classical indications are those we 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 gave with the Dr. Torrent uh, in in uh, in our talk: uh, ovarian cancer, colorectal cancer, gastric cancer are the three most important diseases we can treat with this. Um, the peritoneal uh, rare disease like the pseudomic soma, peritonei, and the mesothelioma are very important because there were no treatment before this concept of treatment uh, in the past. So it's very important because this treatment um, can cure a lot of patients in those two very rare diseases and uh, they, it, be, it become the, 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 the standard of care in those cases. And uh, after that, there are rare diseases in, in which we can consider very specifically uh, rare indication of all this treatment. The, the, the more common probably are the um, cholangiocarcinoma. In some cases, we have very good results. Uh, of course, the small bowel carcinoma. And uh, the endometrial uh, carcinoma, Dr. Torin can tell you about, about that. Some disease, I, I can do the, the list of this because it's too long, but uh, in some cases, in some rare disease in some very selected patients, uh, we can, we can uh, do it in more than the classical indications. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Kenneth. Thank you very much, Dr. Torrent. Please, doctors, know that if you have more questions, you can put in contact with Dr. Torrent, Dr. Kenneth, and team in the email that you can read on the, on the screen, jtorrent at kenneth-torrent.com. I repeat it, jtorrent at kenneth-torrent.com. Thank you very much for your attention and have a, a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.